Raymond had been associating with Clyde, and the police knew he'd been around with, so they assumed that it was Raymond, one of them. So they went to looking for him. And Raymond come back down here visiting, and we told him that he was wanted for murder, and so he didn't go back to work. He, he went and looked Clyde up, and they went to howling together. And they robbed the Grand Prairie and Herb Station, and they robbed the Newhoff Packing Company, which is over at the edge of Dallas. And when they robbed the Newhoff Packing Company, the police was right in behind them. They run them all the way up into Oklahoma. And when they finally ditched the police, well, they were coming through Stringtown, Oklahoma, well, this boy that was with them, who was Ross Dyer, he was lived out here in West Dallas, too. He wanted to buy a jug of whiskey and dance a set or two. So they stopped at a, this dance hall, and Raymond Clyde sitting in the car, and this boy got out and went inside. Well, while he was inside, a, a sheriff and his deputy come over, drove up, and they come over to the car and went talking to Raymond Clyde. And uh, I don't know exactly what happened there, what the questions were, but I think they were intend to arrest him. Well, Clyde couldn't afford to go to jail, you know, with that murder down to Hillsborough on him. So he pulled out his gun and opened fire on him. The sheriff fell, the deputy run, and Raymond said Clyde got out of the car and took after him and run him and killed him. Then Raymond was on the wheel where well, he started off down the road to pick up our street to pick up Clyde, and this sheriff was laying on the ground wounded. He turned over and opened fire on the car, and he nicked one tar and started leaking and they picked Clyde up and they went out in the country. Well, the tar went out on them and they ditched the car. Then from there, they just kept taking cars. The murder of Deputy Sheriff E.C. Moore took place on August 5, 1932. By then, Bonnie Parker had been released from the Kaufman Jail. Now, here's where Bonnie Parker come in. After they killed this officer up in Oklahoma, they come back to Dallas and they laid low a few days. Then they picked Bonnie up and they she took him out to uh, her aunt in New Mexico, state of New Mexico, and they were hiding out there, cool off. They'd went up town, and a sheriff saw them driving around up there in a new car. And you know, during the Depression at time, somebody in a new car, they, they was noticed because there wasn't too many of them people live around in the, where the farms or country that had a new car. So he followed them home. Well, they parked the car out in the front yard and left all their guns in the car and went inside. Pretty soon this guy drove up and he come up the door and he knocked on the door and Bonnie went to the door and he asked whose car that was out there. She says it belongs to a couple of boys here and he said, well, tell him I'd like to check his car. He told him, all right, I'll tell him. And he went back to the car. Well, Raymond went around one way of the house and Clyde went around the other and they had picked up a shotgun that they found in there and they went around and throwed down on him and, and unarmed him, put him in the car, him and Bonnie and Clyde, and carried him over to San Antonio, Texas. Well, they let him out. Well, now that put a federal kidnapping charge against all three of them, and that started Bonnie's career off with him. Now wanted for kidnapping in addition to murder and a string of robberies, Bonnie, Clyde, and Raymond were truly outlaws. Floyd, unaware of the extent of Raymond's guilt, extended a helping hand. Little did he know it was his first step on the road to Alcatraz. Really, I didn't know too much about only what I read in the paper, about the different robbers and things. And he was in so deep when I did find it out, well, you know, it was really too far. The first bad publicity is after they killed this fellow up there. From men on, they had a lot of heat. But you see the reason why I aided Raymond? Because in the first place, he was what started him off was this murder down at Hillsborough, and he didn't have nothing to do with it. Raymond and Clyde, one time, before they got too much heat on him, I didn't know too much about it, but it was about time that the murder happened. But they were still looking for him for that down in Hillsborough. Well, they come by here, and they left a car set in my yard, and it had another guy was with him, and they told me his name was White, and it had a bill of sale in the glove compartment, that belonged to White. <laughs> and so I thought it did. I thought it belonged to the guy. And he said, well, it won't leave it here. We'll be back after it. Well, the police come out. And they want to know about that car. I told them, well, it belongs to White. 
He said, well, how come leave you? I told him, well, Raymond Clyde stopped by here. And they looked away. He said, well, that car had been stolen. He said, we've been looking for that car. Yeah. I told him, well, I didn't know anything about it. I told him, there it is. It's, he told me it was his car, and I just doing him a favor let him set the car. So they carried it off. Next time I seen Raymond, I asked him, what are you trying to pull on me like that? He said, well, said, I didn't think about him coming out and getting it, and we was going somewhere, and we'd be right back and pick it up. But said, we'd come back by, and it was gone. We figured something happened. It didn't stop. I was innocently almost got in trouble. <laughs> on August 30th, 1932, Bonnie, Clyde, and Raymond shot their way out of a roadblock outside Wharton, Texas. On October 8th, Clyde and Raymond robbed the First State Bank in Cedar Hill, Texas, and escaped with nearly $1,500. After dividing the money, Raymond left Bonnie and Clyde and struck out on his own. Of course, Raymond never did get along too good with Clyde because he always considered Clyde a little bit too trigger-happy. You know, he'd shoot too quick. On October 11th, Bonnie and Clyde held up Little's Grocery in Sherman, Texas, and Howard Hall was murdered. Later, Clyde told Floyd about the shooting. He told me that he was in there robbing the man that owned the place at the cashier cage, and he said, I believe he said he looked like a big Swede or something he called him, you know, it was a butcher. And he said, directly I looked up and here he come running up behind me. And he said he was between me and the door going out. And said, I couldn't get out. And said, I backed all the way up in the corner and I kept telling him to, you know, to get on away of that meat cleaver. And he said, he just backing me right on up in the corner and said, I, I finally shot him. Said, I didn't want to, but I did. And he got away. On Christmas Day, December 25th, 1932, Bonnie, Clyde, and their new sidekick, 16-year-old W.D. Jones, murdered Doyle Johnson while stealing his car in Temple, Texas. The car was abandoned a few blocks away. Then another civilian down at Belton, Texas, I believe it was, he and another fellow and Bonnie, and their car was broke down. And he went up in the yard, and there was a brand new car sitting there, and there was an elderly man sitting on the porch. He said he got in the car, and started to start it, and this man went to holler, and his son was a athlete, a big husky feller. Well, he run out, and he run over to the car, and he reached through the window and caught Clyde in the collar like this. He Clyde, small fellow, he didn't weigh about 125, 30 pounds, and this guy was 200 and some pound. And he just said he's just lifting me up, pulling me out, and said he's hollering for his daddy to call the sheriff. And he says I kept telling him to turn me loose, and he wouldn't do it and said, I finally shot him, and he killed him. Well, of course, I could see that. Of course, the first place, he didn't need to be in the man's car. Raymond Hamilton's independent crime career was successful for a while. Then Raymond went down and robbed the Cedar Hill Bank twice, and he robbed LaGrange Bank with Gene O'Dare. Then he went to Wichita Falls. Then they went back up to Michigan, where Raymond had worked with my dad when Clyde killed this fellow down the Hillsboro. I believe they was there only just a few days and they had a plan to rob a bank up there. But uh, according to the report, some girl that Raymond was familiar with, or, you know, trying to go with, it, it as a skating ring. She was supposed to put him on the spot. But really, I think it was a man that Raymond worked with that invited him to go out there and got him on skates and then they called the police. And they caught him and brought him down here. In December 1932, Raymond was arrested and returned to Texas to stand trial for the Booker murder in Hillsborough. 